Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Continue on in our studies of Aqidah Tawasatiyya We continue to speak about the divine attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as they were mentioned in the Qur'an and Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned various sifat or attributes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty possesses and he brought the evidences from the Qur'an and soon insha'Allah ta'ala we will get to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if that of those uh, to af those affirmation or to af affirm those divine characteristics of Allah Tabarak wa Taala, as were mentioned in the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alaihi wasallam. So, for now, we're continuing on with those men those um, attributes Allah Subhanahu wa Taala mentioned, or some of them that Allah Tabarak wa Taala mentioned in the Quran. And of course the evidence comes from the Qur'an that Allah Taala possesses these attributes and Ahlul Sunnah affirms these divine attributes and names for the creator of the heavens and earth. Qala Shaykh al-Islam Fi bab dhikr radi Allah wa ghadabuhu wa sakhtuhu wa karahiyatuhu في القرآن الكريم وأنه متصف بذلك. so شيخ الإسلام رحمه الله تعالى he mentioned those attributes of Allah سبحانه وتعالى which affirm Allah سبحانه وتعالى's attributes that he he سبحانه وتعالى has anger, possesses the attribute of anger and his wrath and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curses those who go against his commandments and disbelieve in him and his messengers alayhim afdal salatu was salam so they incur the wrath of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عنه وقوله ومن يقتل مؤمن متعمد فجزاؤه جهنم خالدا فيها وغضب الله عليه ولعنه وقوله ذلك بأنهم اتبعوا ما أسخط الله أسخط الله وكرهوا ردوانه وقوله فلما أس فلما أسف أسف أسفون انتقمنا منهم وقوله ولكن ولكن كره الله أم بعاثهم فثبت فثبتهم وقوله كبر مقت عند الله أن تقول ما لا تفعلون. الله سبحانه وتعالى says in those verses verses which affirm for the creator of the heavens and earth these attributes of anger and the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he said that Allah is well pleased with them and they with him and this affirms that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with his that he possesses the attribute of pleasure or being pleased with his creation those people who believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the mu'mineen. And Allah says, and whoever kills a believer intentionally, his recompense is hell to abide therein, 
and the wrath and the curse of Allah are upon him. So that shows us that that uh, ayah affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he possesses anger, he has a wrath, tabarak wa ta'ala, and that he curses, that he curses those of his creatures that refuse guidance and those of his creatures that kill believers intentionally. That means that the curse here, it means that they are uh, without mercy, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not bestow his mercy upon them. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that is because they followed that which angered Allah and hated that which he pleased him. So again, this affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses wrath and anger tabarak wa ta'ala in a manner that suits his majesty. That he is pleased with belief and displeased and angry with those who uh, dislike and hate what he is pleased with subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so when they angered us, we punished them. So that shows us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, again, it affirms the sifat or the sifa of anger. Waqoluhu and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but Allah was averse to their being sent forth, so he made them lag behind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, most hateful it is with Allah that you say that which you do not do. So again, that affirms for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses those attributes. Those are from the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has wrath and that he has anger and that these attributes are mentioned in the Quran. These come from the kalam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the speech of Allah the Almighty. And so some of the benefits we, we gain from this or the main point, Sheikh Salah bin Fawzan, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned a shahid min al-ayat. He said in the main point of these verses, and fiha wasfillah bi ghadabi wa rida wa la'an wa al-intiqam wa karahiya wa al-asaf wa al-maqt وَهَذِهِ كُلَّهَا مِنْ صِفَاتِ الْأَفْعَالِ الَّتِي يَفْعَلَهَا جَلَّ وَعَالَى مَتَّ شَا إِذَا شَا كَيْفَ يَشَا وَأَهْلَ السُنَّةِ يَثْبِتُونَ ذَلِكَ لِلَّهِ كَمَا أَثْبَتَهُ لِنَفْسِهِ عَلَى مَا يَلِيكَ بِجِلَالِهِ So Shaykh Salim bin Fawzan, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, he mentioned that the main point of those verses that we just mentioned is that they affirm, that uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself this characteristic of anger and also that he has pleasure, that he receives pleasure from, uh, that he, he possesses this, this attribute of pleasure and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, uh, that he curses those of his creatures that are disobedient and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also has the quality or the attribute of vengeance that when those people are disobedient to Allah and they hate what Allah loves and they harm the believers that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take vengeance on those disobedient wicked sinners and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes all of those are from the sifat Al-Af'al, and we mentioned before in our earlier uh, lessons that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, attributes, they can, be divi- they can be divided into sifat fi'liya wa sifat dhatiya. So the sifat fi'liya, these are from the sifat fi'liya, meaning those, those attributes would have to do, that have to do with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine actions, his perfect actions. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses the quality of being pleased. He possesses the quality of of love, mahabba, and also al ghadab anger and wrath, wa karahiyya and disliking things. Allah subhanahu those are from the af'al, the attributes that have to do with those 
uh, divine attributes which require an action, which are uh, uh, an attribute that has to do with actions of the creator of the heavens and earth, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as Sheikh Salah bin Fawzan mentioned, he said that Allah does these attributes or possesses these attributes and he does these actions in a manner in, in a way that he wishes meaning that how he wishes when he wishes and in a manner that suits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala and the shahid here, the main point being, as Sheikh Salah bin Fawzan mentioned, is that Ahl Sunnah affirms this. This is the uh, characteristic of someone being from Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. This is part of the creed and the minhaj, the methodology of Ahl Sunnah, is that they affirm these divine attributes for Allah, the Almighty, Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. Then Sheikh, Sheikh al-Islam mentioned in the next section of his uh, treatise, Aqidat al-Wasatiya, Dhikrul Majiyallah Subhanahu li fasala qada bayna ibadihi ala ma yaliq bi jalalihi That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He affirms these are the attributes in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that he possesses maji, that he, he comes and he, he, as we mentioned before, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascends and descends. All of those are attributes that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will come to his creation and he will uh, arbitrate between them and allow for them to receive justice for the injustices they received in this creation. And this is in a manner that befits his, his majesty, meaning we don't know the kafi as we mentioned. We don't know how, but we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms for himself in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu affirms for uh, affirms this attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the sunnah and we of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah we affirm these attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah will come on the day of judgment we don't know how and we only describe it in a manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described it in the Quran and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has described it in the authentic sunnah and so the main point being is that Ahl Sunnah affirms these attributes. وَقَوْلُهُ هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمُ اللَّهِ فِي ذُلَلٍ مِّنَ الْغَمَامِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ وَكُدِيَ الْأَمْرُ وَقَوْلُهُ هَلْ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ تَأْتِيَهُمُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ أَوْ يَأْتِيَ رَبُّكَ O yatiya ba'd ba'd ayati rabbika yawm yati ba'd ayati rabbika wa qawluhu kalla idha dukkat al ard dakka dakkan dakka wa ja rabbuka wal malaku saffan saffa wa qawluhu wa yawm tashaqqaku as samaa'u bil ghamami so in these attribute, uh, in these ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the first ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that He subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not do they uh, do they then wait for anything other than that Allah should come to them in the shadows of the clouds and the angels? Then the case would be already judged. And Allah says, Do they then wait for anything other than that the angels should come to them, or that your Lord should come, or that some of the signs of your Lord 
should come, meaning the um, the signs of the hour, the la the the last uh, the the signs of the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Nay, when the earth is ground to powder, and your Lord comes with the angels in rows. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And remember the day when the heaven shall be rent asunder with clouds, and the angels will be sent down with a grand descending. So all of these attributes, these affirm for uh, all of these ayats, they affirm for us those attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the attribute of Maji, the Maji Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it affirms for us that he, he will come on the day of judgment. And he will come in a manner that suits his majesty. And the reason or one of the things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do on this day is he will establish justice between the the his slaves between the creatures meaning all of the the creation mankind and the jinn and the and even the animals where they were dealt with unjustly. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment will establish justice between them and allow for them to get their retribution from one another. So this is also one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes, a sifat fi'liya, those attributes which refer to actions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does. Tabaraka wa ta'ala in a manner that suits his majesty subhana and what's very important here is that this Ahlul Sunnah we believe this in reality the haqiqa tahada we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he mentioned about himself that he will really come on the day of judgment however we don't know the how and we do not try to delve into those matters which have no benefit for us. And Ahl Sunnah also affirms these attributes without making ta'wil as we mentioned. And this is what, this, this is what distinguishes us from the Asha'ira, for example, or the Maturidiyya, is that they will say, they will change the meaning, misinterpret or reinterpret those verses and those attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to mean something else. As Sheikh Salah bin Fuzan mentions that the Asha'ira, that they refer to the Maji, the Maji of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come, they refer to that to mean the Emir of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning that Allah's command will come, or Allah's, the affair of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will settle the affair on the day of judgment and so forth. Ahl Sunnah, however, affirms those attributes as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirmed them and as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam affirmed them. And without making ta'wil of those attributes, and without, without negating those attributes as the Mu'attala, like the Mu'tazila and those other groups that do that. And as the Shaykh mentioned, he says, فَيُقُولُونَ وَجَا رَبُّكَ أَيْ جَا أَمْرُهُ وَهَذَ مِنْ تَحْرِيفِ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ He says, for example, the Sha'ira, they say, and those groups that follow them, they say the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Waja Rabbuka, where Allah says, and your Lord will come, referring to the day, day of judgment. They say that it means that the command of Allah will come, or that Allah will settle the affairs. His command, or maybe judgments will come, will be uh, educated. And this, as Shaykh Salaman Fozan mentions, this is tahrif of, of the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is changing uh, the meaning, making ta'wil or tahrif from one meaning 
to a, to another meaning, to a meaning that suits their intellect, but is not in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam or the Arabic language. Ibn Al Qayyim Rahimahullah Taala mentioned. He said, "Wa ityan wal maji, mudafile, subhanahu noan, mutlaq wa muqayyid." فإذا كان مراد مجي رحمته أو أذابه أو أذابه ونحو ذلك كيد بذلك كما في الحديث حتى جاء الله برحمته والخير وقوله ولك جئناهم بكتاب فسلناه على علم النوع الثاني Al Ityan wal Maji Mutlak Fahada la yukun illa majihi Subhanahu Kekolihi Hal Yandruna illa an an yatiahum Allah fi dhulalam min al gamam Wakolahu waja rabbuka wal malaka safan safa. So uh Imam Ibn al Qayyim Rahimahullah Ta'ala he mentioned regarding those two characteristics Ityan Wal Maji, meaning that Allah uh, to come and uh, basically they mean the, the same, we would translate them the same in English uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, will come on the day of judgment. And he mentions about these, these two attributes. He said that sometimes it's mutlaq and sometimes it's muqayyid. Mutlaq meaning sometimes it's ala itlaq and this is what we were referring to with those verses that they were on itlaq. Meaning that they had their absolute meaning. That they refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala coming on the day of judgment in reality. We don't know the kafi as we mentioned but we know that Allah will come on the day of judgment. That means we accept it ala itlaq. We accept it without any uh, any way of, of of defining or specifying. And this will clarify. It'll be clarified when we talk about uh, al muqayyid. So muqayyid here it refers to making taqyid of those verses or to specify the meaning of those verses. So. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that sometimes those verses, they are mutlaq, like the ones we mentioned were mutlaq, that we accept that Allah will come on the day of judgment in reality. That's mutlaq. Muqayyid, he mentioned some examples of muqayyid here, that the ayats themselves, the verses themselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes taqyid in the verse. Meaning that he mentions that his coming actually refers, actually he, he defines it or he specifies it in the very same verse. For example, uh, Shaykh al-Islam Ibn al-Qayyim mentioned the verse he said, He mentioned Hat Jalah bi rahmati wal khair. This is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he mentioned, uh, for he mentioned the example of this taqyi, this specifying from a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said, "Fil hadith Hat Jalah bi rahmati wal khair." So what is this taqyi I'm, I'm referring to? What does it mean? This means that in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu he used, uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu referred to Allah, he said, Ja, Ja Allah, which means Allah uh, came, or Allah will come. He makes taqyid, he specifies, taqyid, muqayyid, it means to specify. So in this very hadith itself, in the text, it specifies the meaning of what Ja, ja Allah, it, it specifies the meaning. So it says, the Prophet Sallallahu said, Hatta Ja Allah bi rahma. So Allah, until Allah will come 
with rahmah, with mercy. Wal khair, meaning goodness or, or righteousness. So here, this hadith of the Prophet ﷺ makes taqyid of the ityan or the maji of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah here it is referring to Allah coming with rahmah and khair that's muqayyid but in those other verses that we mentioned they refer to itlaq because we have nothing to as evidence to show that those ayat are muqayyid we have nothing to show that those ayats are muqayyid. And one of the principles in usul of fiqh is that if something comes ala itlaq, biduni taqyid, that there's nothing to show that it is specified here on how, for example, in the example we're talking about, on the, uh, the, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come on the day of judgment. There's nothing to refer back to as another verse that explains those verses that we should carry the meaning of those verses to mean that it's specified by for example his rahma or his amr as the shaira say or uh or, or khair however we have in the hadith to show that sometimes it is muqayyid so in those verses, it's ala itlaq, meaning we accept it as it is on its zahir, that it refers to that Allah on the day of judgment will come in reality. But here in the hadith of the Prophet wasallam, we see here that this hadith is muqayyid, that it shows when we talk about the maji, maji Allah, that it is referring bi rahma, wal khair, with mercy and goodness and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan and we will continue on in the next uh, dars we'll talk about some of the uh, characteristics the characteristics or the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his attributes uh, sifat vatiya uh, and the 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 verses that we have been explaining thus far or so far have been referring to uh, a lot of sifat fi'liya those characteristics or attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which refer to actions that he does subhanahu wa ta'ala so in the next dars we'll talk about the waj wajillah and and the yadain and and so forth and these are sifat or attributes of vatiya which refer to Allah himself subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam